In this tutorial, I'm going to go over Section 2 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the Cessna 172S aircraft, which contains operating limitations. As before, the section starts with the table of contents. Next, we've got a blank page, which should say intentionally left blank. Here we can see an introduction, which basically tells us that Section 2 will cover operating limitations, instrument markings, and the basic placards necessary for safe operation of the airplane. It's going to talk about the engine, standard systems, and standard equipments. And these uh, limitations have been approved by the Federal Aviation Administration, and observance of these limitations are required by the United States Federal Aviation Regulations. And there are two notes here. The first note says that refer to Supplement Section 9 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook for amendment operating limitations. Basically, if you have any additional equipment installed in the aircraft that might alter the basic performance behavior of the aircraft. So for example, if you have uh, a stall kit that lets you have up to 40 degrees of flaps and special wing tips which might lower or reduce the stall speeds, then you need to see Section 9 for those amendments. And then below that, we have a second note which essentially says if for, that, for whatever reason your static source becomes um, plugged during flight and you have to switch to the alternative static source, there's going to be a slight calibration issue, which means the airspeeds that you read on the instrument will be slightly off. And so in order to compensate for this, you should uh, keep in the back of your mind that you want to have a little bit of a safety margin, so you might want to keep your airspeeds a little bit higher than you normally would, maybe five or six knots higher, so that you have an ample uh, margin of safety. Next we can see the airspeed actual limitations, which are given in this table. And it's important to remember that VA, the maneuvering speed, is not going to be indicated on the uh, airspeed indicator. There's no color band or tick mark that tells you exactly what VA is. But you will have VNE will be the red line. VNO will give you where the um, yellow or orange arc is. And VFE will be the white arc where the flap extension is allowable. And it's important to also remember that VA does change with weight and the more aircraft weight there is the higher you can fly in turbulent air and that's because the aircraft has more inertia so it won't get bounced around as much and that's exactly the reason why gliders will fly with water ballast so that they can uh, cruise at a higher speed and then dump the ballast so that they can come and land at a much lower speed if we go to the next page, we've got airspeed indicator markings, and these markings um, will, or color bands, will always be on the ticker tape or round dial, depending on which system you have in your uh, cockpit for the airspeed. And there's a note here that says the red arc for low speed warning between 20 and 40 knots is only on the G1000. So on a traditional analog dial, you won't see the red arc at the low end. Here we have power plant limitations. Most of this we talked about in section one. One important note, it says that the static RPM range at full throttle is 23 to 2400 RPM. You should keep that in mind because as you're doing your full power on takeoff and you glance down and give another scan at your instruments for temperatures and pressures, you wanna look at your RPM gauge Make sure that your RPM is between 23 and 2400 RPM, so you're developing full power on takeoff. And it says here that engine operation with indicated oil pressure below the green band range while in cruise or climb configuration is considered abnormal and should be inspected by qualified maintenance personnel before the next flight. Fuel grade was given to us in section one. Oil grade is given here, propeller diameter, here we can see power plant instrument markings. Keep in mind, you do not need to memorize these markings. You should be aware, where, aware of where to find them in the POH, but the color bands tell you what you need to know on the instruments. 
here we have the weights for the normal and utility category and also for baggage. This was again in section one. Here we have center of gravity limitations for the normal and utility category and tells us that the reference datum for these calculations are at the lower portion of the front face of the firewall. Here we have maneuvering limits. This is new on the older 172s from the 80s. They didn't have something specifically uh, like this. And here it says the airplane is certified for both normal and utility category. The normal category is applicable to aircraft intended for non aerobatic operations. These include any maneuvers incidental to normal flying, stalls, except whip stalls, lazy eights, chandelles and turns in which the bank angle is not more than 60 degrees because according to the FARs banks more than 60 degrees becomes aerobatic flight. And here for normal category we can see we've got chandelles, lazy eights, steep turns and stalls with the associated speeds and it says abrupt use of controls is prohibitive, prohibited above 105 knots and then the same thing here for utility category. Here we can see the maneuvering limits and we can also see the load factor limits which says that we've got plus 3.8 G's to minus 1.52 G's and then full flaps plus 3 G's and it also tells us the design load factors are 150 percent above normal and in all cases the structure meets or exceeds the design load limits and so in the utility category we can see we can push the airplane up to 4.4 G's minus 1.76 G's and with flaps full of 3 G's. So the range of G tolerance goes up in the utility category. Now here is an important note. It says aerobatics may impose high loads and should not be attempted. The important thing to bear in mind in flight maneuvers is that the airplane is, is clean in aerodynamic design and will build up speed quickly with the nose down. Propeller speed control is essential is an essential requirement for execution of any maneuver and care should always be exercised to avoid excessive speed in which which in turn can impose excessive structural loads in the execution of all maneuvers abrupt control avoid abrupt use of controls and just remember that the aerodynamic forces on the airplane increase uh, proportionately with the speed of the aircraft. So the faster you go, the higher loads the structure will see. And that's the engineering reason behind that. Here we can see the kinds of operational limits. It tells us that it's approved for day and night VFR and IFR operations, but known flight into icing conditions is prohibited. And here we can see the kinds of operational equipment list K-O-E-L identifies the equipment required to be operational for airplane airworthiness in the listed kinds of operations. So let's see what those are. Here we can have a nice little list and it tells us for day VFR, night VFR, day IFR, night VFR, what we need in terms of placards and markings, air conditioning, communications, electrical power, etc. And there's some comments like these need to be accessible to the pilot in flight the G1000 cockpit reference guide and I believe the one represents true which means you need to have it and a zero means you do not need to uh, maintain this requirement and there, we can see that there's a, a special footnote here for the 12, 24 volt uh, standby battery and the standby ammeter which says that the European Safety Agency requires the 12 volt standby battery and standby ammeter to successfully complete the pre-flight check before operating the airplane in VFR night, IFR day, or IFR night conditions in Europe. Correct operation of the 12 volt battery and standby ammeter, excuse me, 12 volt standby battery and standby ammeter is recommended for all other operations. Note it says recommended but not required. Here we can see more of the equipment list. The equipment list continued with two notes on the primary flight display and multifunctional display backlighting and that's required for day VFR flight if the MFD backlight has failed and display backup mode must be active so engine indicators are shown. 
here we have a continuation of the equipment list. Here we can see fuel limitations. Once again, it says put the fuel selector valve in left or right when refueling. And it says takeoff should be done with the fuel selector in both. If you're doing a slipper skid with a one dry tank, don't do it for more than 30 seconds. Operation on either left or right should only be limited to level flight. If you have a quarter tank or less, avoid uncoordinated flight. In fact, it's prohibited when operating on either left or right tank. And here it says the remaining fuel or fuel remaining in the tank after the fuel quantity indicator reads zero, red line, cannot be safely used in flight. And here we see the flap limitations for takeoff is between zero and 10 degrees. And landing, there's pretty much no restriction. You can land full flaps or zero flaps. Here we have information on the audio system. And so we can see that it says use of aux audio in entertainment audio input and portable electronic devices such as cell phones, games, cassettes, CDs, MP3 players is prohibited under IFR unless the operator of the airplane has determined that the use of the aux radio system and the connected portable electronic devices will not cause interference with the navigation systems of the airplane. So it, you actually have the final authority as the pilot. And then here we have some notes on the 12 volt power system. Here we have limitations on the G1000, which I'll go into on the next portion of this tutorial.